I spoke, O Lord, of your decrees before kings and was not confounded. I pondered your commands and loved them greatly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome everybody to Mass here today at Notre Dame, the Pontifical Institute Notre Dame of Jerusalem Center here in Jerusalem. And we are here for meetings, which we're hopefully finishing up today. And thank you for joining us. Today we're celebrating in the Holy Land the memorial that would be celebrated around the world on the 29th of August, which was then um, replaced by the Sunday because of the prominence of Sunday celebrating the resurrection of Christ, but because this memorial of John the Baptist, of his passion, his suffering, his beheading, is such an important feast here in the Holy Land. It's celebrated as a solemnity today. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. <clears throat> we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that Saint John the Baptist should go ahead of your Son, both in his birth and in his death, grant that as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what you teach. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus, gird your loins, stand up, and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day, who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass, against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Response. I will sing your 
Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety, for you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth, from my mother's womb you are my strength. I will sing your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing your salvation. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul traveled through the interior of the country and down to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered him, we have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. He said, how were you baptized? They replied, with the baptism of John. Paul then said, John baptized with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, they were about 12 men. He entered the synagogue and for three months debated boldly with persuasive arguments about the kingdom of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Herod was the one who had John the Baptist arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had the opportunity one day when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, ask of me whatever you wish and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed, but because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders 
to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. It's interesting that we focus on the martyrdom of John the Baptist or in all, any of the martyrdoms, their passion, their suffering like the passion of Christ. This has amazing teaching for us. It's not something that happened only in the past. And the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah shows us that he also was persecuted. And today it's also true how many people are persecuted for their faith. So this is a thread throughout humanity. It's part of reality. It's a reality check. And there are many consequences and lessons for us to receive. And today, somehow my thoughts have focused a lot on Salome, the girl, maybe teenager, and she was a very good dancer. We saw so many young women, girls, really, at the Olympics this year winning medals. And in that culture also, girls were given in marriage very early. So there she is dancing to the pleasure of the king in his great assembly of powerful people around him and high society in Herod's uh, rule in his kingdom. We have different personalities here. We have Herod himself, and we have his wife, Herodias, and then we have Salome, and we have John the Baptist, and we have the soldiers who execute, and we have the disciples who come for John's body. And everyone is doing their part in this story. It's not a pre-assigned part because there's liberty. It's pre-assigned in a way for John the Baptist because he's a gift from God to aged parents who had given up on the hope of having children, so much so that Zechariah tried to tell the angel it couldn't happen. And God's plan comes forward and comes through and requires our involvement. And John the Baptist is not just an entity to himself. He's preparing the way for Jesus. So there's a whole purpose in his life. He's to reveal Jesus and to prepare people to receive him. And we saw that in the second reading, that as far away as Corinth, there's a community of people who received the baptism of John. That's an also an interesting, who knows how far the mission of John extended. The Roman soldiers came, and they were changed. And maybe they went back and uh, told other people. Um, Jewish pilgrims were coming to Jerusalem. And they heard of John the Baptist, they probably went to see him, like many people do to go and see a very holy person that's famous, or to go and hear preaching from a person who is doing great preaching in, throughout the history of humanity. It's been like that. And so the word of John spreads all over uh, the region. And then we have, <clears throat> uh, so John is set up in this big framework, coming from God to prepare for Jesus, and his mission is being accomplished, but there's tremendous resistance. When John is preparing for Jesus, it's not just get ready to recognize him and declare him Messiah. It's about our lives have to change to match. And from the smallest people to the most important famous people. And so Herod is also involved, and he's living a disordered life, a life that's very convenient for him, a life of compromises and uh, conveniences and pleasures, and uh, really using all of his uh, all of his abilities to indulge himself. There was a major head of state once who finished his time in office, and he said, I had a blast. I think Herod could probably say, I had a blast. And yet his conscience was there, 
And this is the part then where the freedom comes in, the interior core of the person. And he is actually hearing the words of John the Baptist, and he recognizes him as a holy man, as a man of God, who's speaking to his heart, to his conscience, to his mind. But he's so tied up in his relationships, he cannot do the truth in his life. He can hear it. It's painful for him, which is a good thing. If we put our hand on the fire and it gets burned, it's good that it hurts because otherwise our hand would burn up. We wouldn't take it away. But this, he, he's not able to deal with the pain in his conscience. He's not able to bring his life into order with God. And we can't throw too many stones at Herod because this is part of the human condition. It really takes great resolve and steps, just like it did for John the Baptist. John couldn't just come out and put up a billboard, Jesus coming, get ready. No, John himself went into the desert. He left the world. He became totally dependent on God. He developed a prayer life. He went into the depths of his soul and heart. He belonged completely to God. He lived a life of penance, denying himself. And then he lived a life of generous ministry. There were crowds coming to him, and he was baptizing them all the days, serving them, helping them to understand God's plan and doing it with great discernment. We can read that in the accounts of his mission, speaking to the different types of people, how they were to adapt the call to repentance in their own lives, which he himself was living authentically. And it's that type of authentic living which is the full response of conscience to the grace of God. That's hard for all of us. Nobody has it easy. Nobody. None of the saints had it easy. None of, none of the saints, none of the martyrs had it easy. And that's the way Jesus said also, the way to heaven is narrow and steep and thorny and difficult. And the way to indulgence of life, just losing our life, is comfortable, easygoing. Just let it go, let it flow, go with the flow. I'd like to focus on Salome. Her mother was obviously filled with hatred and that doesn't come from a good place. But Salome is a young girl. She has her life ahead of her. Her father just offered her so many things in his drunkenness, in his pleasure-seeking, and in his vanity in front of all his courtiers. Vanity. And Salome is a young woman. She's already realizing what life's about. She knows how to pull the strings. And she goes to her mother for advice. Now, she didn't have to carry out the orders of her mother. She went for advice. And her mother says, well, I want the head of John the Baptist. But Salome could have got half the kingdom. She could have got a principality. She could have asked Herod, I want to marry that guy, the, the best athlete, the best soldier, the best general in the army. No. She went along with her mother. She went with the flow because she had her vested interest, the type of dress she wanted, the type of comfort and acceptance in the court with her mother. And there's a call also to young people. But she had a bad start because her parents were both indulging in pleasures, vanities, selfishness, and hatreds, also in violence, also in a path away from God. How much parents influence children's ability to make the real decisions? How much mediocrity in parents' lives do this, also in priests' lives, in teachers' lives? Mediocre teachers will not produce great students. Total dedication. Mediocre healthcare professionals won't really help the people out of their illness. We saw the generosity during this difficult time, the last year and a half, of so many healthcare workers on the front lines giving everything. I saw them in New York at 9-11, the firemen. I knew them, giving everything. And this is what John does. He gives everything. He gives himself completely. Let that be our prayer today, to give everything. To God the Father Almighty, whom we owe everything in our lives, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed for his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge and life of the truth. We pray for the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her, leading her to deeper holiness, following the call of God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for all the peoples of the world, and especially their leaders, that their hearts will be oriented to truth and justice, and so preserve harmony among peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are oppressed by any kind, imprisoned, migrants, refugees driven forth by violence or absolute need, that the Lord may graciously grant them relief and fidelity to their conscience even in their circumstances. Let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and our own community, let us pray now in our hearts for the intentions that we have. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your Church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. By the meaning of water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who is after sharing our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, I'm showing my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Through these offerings which we bring you, O Lord, grant that we may make straight your paths, as taught by that voice crying in the desert, St. John the Baptist, who powerfully sealed his teaching by the shedding of his blood, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the, flowery, the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to hear, to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 <clears throat> Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Adolfo Tito, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, <clears throat> with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress <clears throat> as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ, keep me safe for eternity. Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. John answered and said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Dear Jesus, you gave great praise to John the Baptist, and you teach us doing that. And Jesus, we want to wake up to the teaching you have given us that we participate in your mission, some preparing the way, some following up. Jesus, Help us to become aware of our mission to prepare for you, to point you out to others, like John the Baptist did, and to do this with authenticity of life. Jesus, maybe we have been partially or very derelict in our duties, and you don't come to condemn us, you come to redeem us, to complete that proclamation of conversion that John announced. Jesus, help me to convert and to open up my conscience and my life completely to grace, to become the person, the one sent out, the missionary that you call me to be with an authentic life. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I hope in you. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I adore you. Let us pray. 
Grant, O Lord, as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, that we may revere what it signifies, uh, the saving sacrament we have received, and even more may rejoice at its clear effects in us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. So thank you for joining us here at Notre Dame this morning for Mass and this change schedule we had the last few days because of our meetings here in Jerusalem. And maybe tomorrow we'll be in Galilee, God willing. And so God bless you. <laughs>